Hello, and welcome back to Veteran Instincts. For today's episode, we return to competitive X-Wing to bring you a Kyber Cup match between Louis Long and Silas Hyen. Hello, guys. Hi. Hello. Louis, why don't you tell us about the competition, uh, what stage we're at here, uh, and give us a bit of a rundown of your list. Sure. So this is the Kyber Cup, uh, which is actually one of the larger tournaments going on right now. It's a fantastic tournament organized by the Hexiled guys, Hexiled Gaming. Check them out on Twitch. They also do an excellent stream of a lot of the games. Um, and it's got over 480 people, I think, which makes it probably the largest online tournament uh, that X-Wing has ever done. Yeah, so this game is a final round game, sixth round uh, of Swiss between myself and Silas. Uh, we were both four and one, which meant that the winner of this game was guaranteed to make up. Uh, and Silas, going to you, um, yours is a list here with the Separatists that we've actually been seeing more and more of in recent months. Talk us through your particular build of it uh, and, and give us a bit of an idea about what you think of it in terms of its strengths and weaknesses. Okay, um, so uh, Boba Fett was really good and now we have something almost better here. Um, so I like Force and Fire Sprays. That's why I brought both Sidious and uh, Uku on each of them. I went for, for the bid, five-point bid here. Uh, in the Delta tournament that I participated in here not too long ago, I actually removed Slip 1 as well to get the even lower bid because um, I think that's quite crucial, at least for my play uh, method. Um, and then the false transponder code is really crucial as well. So there's just some good combos here. And like both Django and Sam's ability are just really, really good. Louis, back to you. We can see uh, a very nice kind of triangle of obstacles here. Um, going into the match, I know you've played some practice matches. Obviously, you get into the sharp end of the tournament. Um, what was your goal with the obstacles? And do you think you kind of achieved it? Or did Silas get the better of things? Um, so I wanted to create a little bit of space in the middle because I knew I would probably be engaging him um, somewhere towards my side of the board or in the middle and wanted to, to make some space where I can escape around the edges. Uh, so you can see the way I, I set up. I've been playing this four Jedi list pretty much since the Eaters fell down. Um, and even before then, I was flying four Ether Sprites. And it's a pretty standard opening for me. So Silas, we can see um, Louis with a split setup here. Um, you've gone with both ships together and come out quite quickly on turn one. Um, what's your kind of target priority here? What are you kind of hoping for from a first engagement? Definitely Obi-Wan on Mace was my main target when I started this game. Uh, the sense is the thing that could lose me the game the most because I can get blocked and lose my shots. So that was the thing I had in mind. And then that A7, A7 auto blast of maximum ship combo is just nasty as well. Um, so I needed to get those off quickly. Uh, and then I just saw him lining them up for me and the others on the, on the left. Uh, so I just... Put them together and went for the alpha strike, uh, which I think I, I, I mean, at this point I'm standing in a rather good position, uh, I think, because then I can have the flank where uh, Ahsoka and Shakti was maybe a bit too uh, distant from the, the fighting. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like the way Louis sets up in this matchup, you feel like he probably doesn't want to joust, um, but if you're just chasing them, that that's you know that's a win, right? At that stage, it's almost. You're just freely chasing things and getting shot into something that can't shoot back, or he just do with half his list, and either one of those is a good outcome for you. Yeah. At that point, I'm just taking free shots on the ships I wanted to kill. Uh, and if he'd set them up in a box, would you consider jousting all four of them? Like, what, what's the point with the double fire sprays? There is an argument for that, because I have my force, and I hopefully have my actions, so I have some modifiers. And then I can maybe transponder code some of them. Uh, so I think maybe is these guys need the bullseye for them to be real good. Like hit hit real hard. And if I can dodge that and joust at the same time, then I'm in a really good position. Absolutely right. And then in that joust as well, the coming out the other side for the Jedi, you have bombs on both ships. Exactly. The bombs are really crucial here because uh, you just need to get past the other's list, and then you can again to really deal damage uh, with both the uh, rear attack and then. Proximity mines or thermal detonators. Absolutely. And we see here um, Louis taking a lock with Ahsoka early on, and that is purely to trigger false transponder codes. Yeah, so that's pretty much the opening I was looking for. Um, as Silas said, you know, I, I set up opposite him looking to try and draw his ships in, thinking they'll, they'll probably want to come down and kill. 
Mason Obi Wan and my plan was to run along the board edge with the gas clouds for cover, while the other two scoot around and try and knock those force transponder codes off as quickly as possible. Uh, if I can do that before they start shooting, then that's that's already sort of um, step one achieved. Because the, the last thing I want to do with my sprites is let him take a lock and jam off my focus. Absolutely. As somebody who played uh, one of the practice games with you, this opening looks very familiar. And we see that plan sort of starting to work here already. The the lock on Zam meant that Zam takes the focus action there rather than could potentially have locked, got rid of your evade. And, and with Django boosting around the corner, this might look a little bit scarier than it does. But anyway, you're going to take a couple of shots. Uh, so let's see how they go. Django opening up with a good initial roll. So I, I do could this before I shot. So that's why it's the crit. Uh, wonderful. Uh, for hit, hit, crit. Um, an average dice there. Spends the evade, spends the force, uh, and takes nothing. The second shot looks to be at range three and through a gas cloud, so a little bit less scary, but nevertheless, good to get early shots from Silas, maybe start burning through that force supply. Yeah, at this stage, I'm just looking to, you know, you, you might have noticed I moved Obi-Wan a little bit slower there, um, thinking Zam's going to come in, I can use the cloud as cover. If Django goes for the boost, he's taking an unmodified shot, uh, which I was, I was happy to tank with obviously having a Django roll three paint out of hand with, with a Dooku crit <laughs> was a little bit mm. uh, squeaky bum, but got away with it. Yeah, and we see here that, that gas cloud, uh, meaning that the two hits from Zam uh, don't come close to doing any damage. Uh, and final shot of the turn is going to be Ahsoka. Uh, not in bullseye, range three obstructed, low chance of doing any damage, especially when she rolls one hit. Uh, and plenty of evades there uh, on the defense. Yeah, Louis, you mentioned going slowly, and I can see wanting to to get the gas cloud in the way. Um, I would worry a little bit now, though. Uh, it's just, just the, the fact you've got the five straight and the boost, you're kind of confident you can outpace these guys. Now, the, the other thing that was in my mind here was a hard one from Obi, uh, and then a barrel roll back. So try and block what I anticipated would be quite a fast move from Django. Um, but what I didn't want to risk was Django taking a slow move. If he'd done a one bank, and then, then Obi's in a lot of trouble. That's actually really fun because I was debating whether or not to go slow or fast. <laughs> exactly if you wanted to do the one heart and barrel or the five straight. Yeah, so, so I kind of left the, the options open. And, and I was happy with where I am here because I can do a boost into a five. Um, and and feel like I'm fairly confidently getting away and still haven't evaded. Yeah, Louis, this is a list you've been running, or well, versions of this, right? Four Jedi for, for, well, it feels like two years at this stage, essentially ever since the Eighth of Sprites came out. And it's a list that you're constantly on edge, right? Like this situation where you're fairly happy is you're taking two shots, one of them behind a gas cloud, but you're sitting there with a three health, three agility ship, taking shots from somebody carrying Dooku crew where you can call results. Um, it's a nerves of steel list. Well, it, you know, like, like I said, that very first shot into Obi Wan, you know, he he could have popped right if if I blanked out one evade, and then he's doing hit crit with a direct hit, and that's Obi Wan gone in the opening exchange. Absolutely, because we were thinking the same watching this along that the the one turn barrel back gives you an option to block Django, but it feels incredibly high risk, doesn't it? Because like you say, if it goes wrong, then potentially you lose Obi for nothing. And particularly high risk given that it's Django and somebody who benefits from having done. A more straightforward maneuver than you. So if Django does the blue, the uh, which I believe is the one bank on the uh, fire spray, um, I, I think for me that would have tipped the balance to thinking that that maybe you do Silas go ahead, do the one bank, uh, and then if you've got a Jedi in front of you who's done a more difficult maneuver at range one with no token, that would have been tricky. I like to call the ability the uh, the Jedi hunter because it really targets the Jedi and the force users. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think maybe that's part of uh, why he's doing so well in the letter at the moment. Um, obviously, we know that the fire sprays are a, a good chassis, uh, and these guys have got plenty of good upgrades to choose from. Um, so, Silas, looking at the position now, um, you've got your ships in close to Obi Wan. Got some nice early shots. I think I'm a bit less confident than Louis is that he can he can run away this turn. Uh, but we'll see what happens. But what I do like from Louis' position is Ahsoka um, and Shaq T. They've got a nice flank on Zam. How are you feeling about that? And are you considering turning Zam towards them, or is this 
this list all about focus fire and keeping it, your fire sprays pointing in the same direction? Yes, that's a that's a good question because at first I chose to just ignore these guys. Think okay, they have two dice. They're not gonna hit the bullseye because I move after and I can just boost if I need to. Uh, I was debating whether or not I should turn in. Uh, I had some options whether or not I should chase Obi Wan uh, and keep the focus fire, as you said. So it was really a debate, but I I really just the thing my my thought was to just ignore those two until it was necessary. It's the moment. Obi Wan and Mace is gone. Then I don't have a hard time taking down the next two. Yeah, I think that's really fair. And again, it's something we hit on last week uh, with Ben Lee on the channel. I think that early identification of the kind of high priority targets and sticking to it is definitely something that that can pay dividends in a lot of games. So Lloyd, uh, Louis obviously has run a lot of Jedi. Um, you are in this tournament as well, and also running Jedi. Having a look at Louis's list. What's your feeling? We haven't seen an awful lot of the ETAs, and I think that maybe the community feels that they're not they're not quite there. Um, but Louis, obviously, doing good work with them. Is that that they're better than we think they are, or just that Louis's better than we think he is? <laughs> <laughs> the former, definitely the former. <laughs> Trick question. <laughs> yeah, you've given me a question there that only has one answer that I can say online. I think with all of these Jedi lists, they have the potential to be incredible and they have the potential for everything to go as badly as is possible. Um, all of these ships can have one bad roll and evaporate. And so they run the high risk game that all kind of ace ships do, but they're doing it quite often at a much lower initiative and, and generally without much of a bid as well. So even where you have a higher initiative ship like Obi here, he's running at or close to 200 points in every game. So they certainly have the potential to win games and win lots of games and do well. But I think it's one of those, it's sort of like an inverse heroic almost. In an individual game, it can be amazing. Um, or across a tournament, it can be very solid. But it can have a single turn where everything just goes catastrophically wrong and it costs you a tournament. Yeah, and speaking of turns where everything goes wrong, um, Obi-Wan did do a decent job of running away, but we got a turn in from Mace that maybe we'll talk to Louis about after the dice results. Uh, and crucially, um, a really, really nice move there uh, from Zam, uh, giving Silas the option to to react and did so, used the boost to, to get into range one, it looks like on Obi Wan, uh, and also avoid the uh, the bullseyes of the ships coming on in his flank. Um, and then Django in range for that target lock, which has jammed off uh, the defensive token of Mace. Um, so initial roll here, end up with hit, hit, crit. And Mace rolling well, uh, but already having to spend two force. Um, Mace does at least have three, uh, but that is one token left uh, with a second shot coming in. Yeah, it was the goal to get the focus fire, and I, I, I did that pretty well. And then with that roll, it helps as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And Sam, with limited mods helping you out, four hits uh, into two focuses. So we've got the one force left to spend. And an early three damage into Mace does live, but already down to one. Yeah, this is where you can see the value of uh, the force transponder codes jamming that focus right off. Yeah, absolutely. That's two more health that that's, that's cost you. Um, I'm just saying it's two points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous. Yes, it is ridiculous. Um, we get the revenge fire here. Mace did live through that, uh, and I think that's really important in terms. Of, I think losing a ship at this stage would have been uh, would have been damaging. Uh, Mace electing not to fire again. Another interesting choice. Talk to Louis about both of those in a second, uh, and we get down to Shakti out of arc, just the one hit, which is evaded by spending the force, uh, and that reveals. The Zam card, uh, which is, I think, you better mean business, um, which is going to allow the double tap should Ahsoka shoot at him. Uh, and Louis, um, good decision there, I think, to not shoot with Mace. Um, but you go ahead here and shoot with Ahsoka. Uh, what's the kind of thinking there? So Ahsoka is obviously not on one health and has a token and force. So I'm I'm not so worried about him taking an unmod shot back in. Um, obviously, whereas against Mace, there's every chance he's going to die because at the time, 
as Amstel had the force. Yeah. So you know, for me, for me, it was almost a no-brainer not to shoot with Mace. Um, the turn in, which you, you were asking about, was was obviously a quite a high risk move. Um, and I think Silas played that really well, putting Zam in a position to capitalize on it because I thought I would have the cloud as cover, which was always the plan, right? To, to keep the clouds uh, as cover. And I, I didn't get it, which meant that Mace was taking a much worse shot than I thought he would. But I, I needed to get Mace into the fray because until Sense is working reliably, um, I, I can't do much against this list. I'll be guessing at my blocks, and if I get them wrong, I'm dead. Yeah, and we see that trade of fire, uh, Ahsoka doing one damage to Zam, uh, and then taking one damage in return. Uh, so we end the turn with Mason one health, Ahsoka having dropped a shield, and Zam taking two. Yeah, I, and I think it's reasonable. The turn in, you, you, you've you turned three ships in towards the fights. Obi-Wan, I, I agree, I think, didn't have a safe way to stay in and try and get shots. And I don't know that I would have predict, predicted that Zam move either. It was really nice, that bank. gave Silas a lot of options. and And he's got the benefit um in your favor uh you are now in sense range and that is something that uh, as silas mentioned in the in the opening could turn the tide of this game sense is something i've seen you run in a lot of lists louis talk us through kind of how you use it specifically you know in this situation how do you make the decision between the kind of free knowledge about where zam's going at i5 or do you spend that force to to kind of get an idea about where Jango, who's maybe slightly more dangerous is going so going into the game, my plan was always to focus on Django um, because Zam obviously has a double tap and that extra uncertainty of, of whether uh, Zam can shoot me again. Um, <clears throat> and the other thing is Dooku on Django means he can influence Zam's roles, but not vice versa. So for me, Django is, is the one to take off the table as quickly as possible. So here I was looking to get a block on Django um, with Mace, and then try and get Ahsoka and uh, Shakti to put some put some guns on him. But the fact that Mace has only got one force and he'd be spending it on Django made it very, very tricky because now I'll have no mods if I reposition. Uh, so I elect not to sense Django and, and try and just play it the old school way. And so as we come into this turn, um, there's lots to think about. Louis, your turn is perhaps slightly more complicated. Uh, with a, a one health mace in between those two ships. So Silas, for you first, you've got a couple of things to consider here. Um, obviously, one of them being that mace can look at your dial, but you've also got a decision about dropping bombs. Do you want to just talk us through everything you're kind of thinking through in this planning phase? So this is what really encouraged me to also go after uh, mace, is that I now have the back to two of his ships. So the threat of the thermal detonators are there. So I can just drop them. So that was definitely a part of my planning. And then the decision of, I want to have both ships attack something, hopefully the same thing this turn. So that was the kind of my thought to maybe turn in with Django or something, and then do something where Sam can then also attack the same ship. So keep the focus fire intact as long as possible. It's like the goal for this turn. And then for you, Louis, you've got a one health ship with low force. You've got bombs to think about. You've got rear arcs. What's your thought process going into this? <laughs> I feel like you have more to deal with. Not, not great, huh? Um, so I think I ended up dialing a one hard with Mace to turn in towards um, Django. So if Django goes fast, uh, I get the block. Um, and also, if Zan does a two hard, I would get a block, I think. With the one hard, I think, was going to land on the cloud, which, which I thought he wasn't going to go for. So that, that, for me, was probably the, the least bad position to put Mace. For the other two around the back, it's it's pretty straightforward. Um, zoom past the bombs, which are almost certainly coming, uh, and try and make it through that that gap between the two gas clouds to to get some fire on Django. And Ob One is is just trying to reposition and then find his way back into the fight. And focusing on Ob One because actually I think that's a, a position that I often find I have ships in, and not something that I can remember talking about on the channel yet. I think it's not uncommon in the early stages of a game to have one ship that's kind of pointing away for the fight or maybe after the initial engagement. Here he seems to me to have the option to to K-turn, which points him in the right direction more quickly, but he's going to be very close to Zam the subsequent turn. Um, or to kind of go around that rock, which has the advantage of not facing down a range one Zam shot in two turns time, but maybe always being a kind of turn behind in terms of constantly chasing his tail. Uh, is one of those two a better option than the other? Yeah, so I, I looked at the, the boost into the three hard to come around that rock. 
um, which I didn't really like because he would then be chasing into the thermal detonators from, from Zan. Um, I also looked at the two Talon, but I think this is where I made a mistake in the setup is putting Obi-Wan directly in the middle of that channel. He can neither Talon to the left or to the right, that rock being there. So that's, that's just poor positioning. Um, so I think I ended up going for the 4K with the expectation that depending on what I see Zan doing, I can take a boost to take the angle um, and move myself into the cover of that rock. Oh, yeah, very nice. So you'll be able to get the sense information and then reposition OB if you need to. Yeah, so this is where Mace took a sense on Zam, uh, which I think ended up doing a two forward. And I thought, oh, that's yeah. great. I can I can now do the uh, curvy boost into a 4K and put myself in, in a nice place away from everybody, but still pointing in the right direction. Very nice, very nice. Uh, it also leaves, well, Mace relatively safe to get a shot after the two straight I, I feel like sam's gonna have to boost i mean he is going to be able to boost uh, and get that shot around um as he's moving after ab1 but it is at least going to take away a mod and, and put a bit more distance in between fire spray and a mace we see the thermals coming out here um dropping both both uh the higher threat um I, I can't remember whether I hit anything or not, but just I need to drop both here because the potential is big uh, in the case it turns in against Sam. Uh, yeah, absolutely. If he if he hasn't got a plan for them, it could be huge. It's a bigger area of effect. And if you, obviously if you catch with both, uh, then happy days. Um, we see the first Jedi, though, using the abilities, getting out of the way nicely. Boost and barrel roll takes him out of range. Uh, having the force there from Shakti's ability, having kept it the previous round, which was very nice planning for from you, Louis. Uh, Shakti, nice quick maneuver and, and the boost. It's going to be a little bit close for Shakti on those bombs, but I think probably okay. And then I worry a little bit about Mace here. If Django goes straight, uh, do you think that? He bumps Mace, or uh, or does he bump into the corner of Ahsoka here? I, I think it was Mace. Um, I remember while he, while he was looking at at his uh, his options and uh, with with Zam, I was lining it up and and looking where where Jang is going to end up. Um, and she ended up doing a turn, which uh, worked out okay. I think I, I was going to say interesting. You you mentioned Shakti's uh, ability. It, it's it's one which obviously she can do it for one ship and not spend a force. Um, which is great, but in this instance, I chose to do it for two ships because I always feel like um, having a focus or an evade is better than having that extra force on Shakti. Yeah, and Shakti definitely glad of that evade now. Boost successfully getting out of range of these bombs, uh, but facing down Jango at range one. Um, both did a white maneuver though, so at least Jango's ability is off. So this was a really great block that I didn't see coming at all. Mostly because I didn't see such, such an aggressive move, and maybe I wanted him to turn in against Sam, so I didn't consider the other possible possibility. So that was just uh, well played. Uh, but uh, despite the block, Django rolling three hits there on his attack dice. Uh, Shakti, even with the evade spending, only getting two evades. Uh, so he <laughs> did take a damage. Uh, and we're now into the auto blaster shot from Obi Wan. First spend of an R787 charge, that changes a hit to a crit. Uh, so no point rolling evade dice there. Sam takes another shield. Triggers her ability. She's got no charges left. I think actually one charge left at this point. Uh, so sensibly has it on the uh, side that allows her to take a target lock and regain a charge. And she has a choice of targets. It's worth recalling that Django opted not to Dooku on that one, which I was very thankful for when the dice came up. <laughs> uh, yeah. Three hits and a blank. If he dooku that, Shakti could be feeling very, very sad. But I think you wanted to keep it for, for defense. Is that's, that's what you were saying. Yeah, yeah. that's what I did. And here I targeted the Soka mainly because to, to strip her focus, because um, I didn't see me hitting Shakti when she the obstructed. Yeah, with a force left, I think Shakti is, is very unlikely to take damage. And here the focus gets stripped, which is a win for me. So no damage done. Just all about reducing that damage coming into the fire sprays, right? Because they're, they're fairly tanky, but once they start burning, they can burn surprisingly quickly. Yeah, I think if we 
like at the start that that 20 health behind two agility is a lot um but with the medium bases and nothing else to shoot at uh, they do go down quickly nice roll here from shakti Ooh, but some nice of a dice uh, so only the one shield coming off django uh, is facing another range one shot so it could take a little bit more damage this turn nice dice there two hits and a focus turns into three hits oh and another two paint from Django. so another one shield um taking three damage across the two ships here feels a little bit like of a, a lucky outcome from uh from that engagement silas yeah uh i was happy about that i got blocked and had one mod so uh, that was a win for sure and uh slightly forgetting a second shot here unmodded oh and yeah, it's not even worth talking about. Let's uh, let's roll on past that. Um, so, Louis, good positioning this turn. Nice blocks, good range run shots, but not a lot to show for it. Oh, I think what we missed is Ahsoka had a target lock. Yeah, missing Ahsoka's target lock there does re-roll the dice. Uh, we get the evade roll, and Zam does indeed take a further shield. Louis, as I was saying, nice positioning, but not an awful lot of damage to show from it. And now your ships look a little bit jammed up in terms of where they go next turn. Starting to worry at this point, or relax, you know, still relaxed and uh, with a plan? I, I, I don't know about calm and relaxed, um, having watched my my what, six hits go into two damage on Django um, when, when he had <laughs> no mods. Well, he had the force, but that, that felt a little bit like, ugh. Um, especially when you compare the, the sort of hot red dice that, that Silas has been been rolling at from the beginning. It just felt like a little bit, okay, there's hard work to do here. Especially as you say, it's starting to get a bit jammed up uh, with not a lot of options on how I focus my fire on, on Django, which was my original target, or do I start looking at Zam, which actually became quite an interesting uh, proposition here, uh, looking at, at the positioning on where Obi-Wan can be. Um, the sense that I can get with Mace, and then obviously Ahsoka moving first, Mace being able to move at the same time as Shakti, can free up all that space to to go where I want to go. And just as we come into this planning phase again, so Louis, if you, you've got bombs again to think about. Now, perhaps the bombs from Zam are a bit easier to avoid. The, the space where they're going to be only really threatens uh, Ahsoka. Um, was there a point at all where you were thinking about going left with Mace? Or was that never an option for you? Yeah, it, it definitely was. I think the the option of the two sloop was obviously uh, quite interesting, especially with Mace low on force. It's it's an easy way to top him up. Uh, but obviously that's right where a proximity mine is going to fall. Uh, so I don't want to do that. So Silas, same for you. In that kind of situation, are you the kind of person that keeps prox mines until they're guaranteed? Or will you drop them with the anticipation that somebody might have forgotten about them or, or could have called your bluff on it? Um, so mostly I wait till it's guaranteed. If I feel necessary to maybe block or have the threat there, in case. If it's really crucial, like, I don't want you to go over here where my ship is. And if you do, you're gonna have to eat a proximity man. That's a chance as well. Mostly I like to have them guaranteed, because they are very valuable. They are the damage output that I don't have, because uh, I only have two guns. So the bombs are my third gun, kind of. Uh, so I like to keep them until I need them. Absolutely. And I think that's probably the right choice, right? Unless you're really down in the game or really struggling, then the threat of them is almost as valuable, right? Because like we said, it, it stops Mace going there on the off chance you do drop one, because if you do, Mace is dead. Yeah, I, I wish you'd, told, you, you, you'd said that before the game, Silas, and then I would have known <laughs> it was safe, safe to fly there. But as uh, it is, you're exactly right. The the threat of the proximity, especially Mace on, on one health. I think if he was full health, I might have considered it. Maniac. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but on one health, I, I just cannot take that risk. Yeah, you are a maniac. You'd have been halved. <laughs> yeah, not to mention he's got Dooku on the, on the dice roll as well. Yeah, I think that's a really good way of looking at it. So the, the proximity mine drop here, two things, as you say, requires Louis to have forgotten about it or to risk it. Um, so maybe a bit less likely. Um, but also, if Louis doesn't run into it this turn, then that's a wasted mine. That's, that's of no consequence later in the game, right up against the board edge it's not going to play a role. Whereas in the middle of the map, it might be useful either way. Uh, so I think that's a really sensible way of looking at it. Uh, you can see you both taking a little bit longer about this planning phase, and I don't blame you. Um, definitely into the meat of the game here. And Silas, from your point of view, 
We're talking about Louis's position, saying that we don't love it, although it sounds like he's got a plan to kind of switch targets and maybe get himself out of it. How are you feeling? Django definitely took less damage than he might have done that turn, but Zam is Zam is bleeding slightly. Yeah, so I went into this turn thinking if I can survive this and have good positioning, then I can set up because I knew I was going to take some damage here because both Soka and Shakti was ready to punish uh, Sam uh, rather rather much. Um, so I set up my ships in a way where I can come in the next turn and have a good turn there, uh, and then just go defensive here. That's my thought going into this. Um. I believe this is the turn where I forget to use Sam's ability. Yeah, I think we can see that here. There's no card gone down. You've been really good so far about about putting a card down. Um, and and we'll... um, that's just a good old brain fight. Um So, Louis, we saw uh, Sam just out of range one. Did you go ahead and spend to flip the dial anyway, given that she's your target? Yeah. Um, I, I needed to guarantee that Obi Wan was going to get the block, and I believe Zen was doing it too hard to the right. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, yeah, That's I think correct. so. And he didn't drop any bombs, which obviously helped uh, me decide that Ahsoka can come in this way, get the CLT uh, lined up, and also probably avoid or at least put a cloud between her and Django. And then looks for all the world like we're going to see a three hard from Shakti here. Nice space opened up. Um, Probably not space to barrel roll to, to kind of get that bullseye, but I suppose that with the two bullseyes side by side, at least one of these ships is going to get them. Just waiting while Mace uh, decides what to do. Spends a force for the evade. Sensible knows he's not getting shot at by Zam, uh, but we don't know what Django is doing at this stage. Uh, also get an evade um, from Shakti. That's kind of the downside of having taken that chip damage early on on Shakti. Now you need just to be that little bit more defensive, but you do have the force for modification. I was worried that Django was going to do a one bank away, uh, which obviously would set up rear arc as well as potentially proximity mines. Um, and obviously it's a blue move, which will hurt my ability to spend force. I mean, I considered that, but I don't like splitting them up too much. I did that in some games where just then you can even punish Sam even more because then there's nothing Django could do. So we've got the Obi Wan move here. We were watching this game live, Lloyd and I, and I was advocating for the boost so that uh, Zam didn't move too much um, uh, before Lloyd kindly reminded me that if he boosted, um, Zam would just fly straight over the top. Uh, so Louis, Louis, thankfully more intelligent than I am, uh, stays still uh, and I think takes the opportunity to get a lock. Is that correct? Yeah, because it's completely free, right? You spend the force to get the lock, which you aren't getting shot at, and you regen again. Absolutely. We get the Zam bump. And we get this one bank here from Django. And I really like that, Silas. Lou is pointing out that the one bank the other way would have given him trouble this turn. But I think you're absolutely right. If you had flown Django off the other way, then Louis gets at least one turn, if not a couple, of trying to deal with Zam in the corner of the board whilst Django's wasting his time flying around the top half of the board. And I think that could have been crippling. And I, I, I think, I, think I, I like this position much more with Django still a threat for the next turn. Yeah, yeah I feel like it's something we've spoken about before. Right? If you're going to disengage with some ships, I, you probably want all of your ships to disengage because leaving half your list to fight an entire list is, is almost certainly a losing prospect. Exactly. I would, yeah, and I did the boost here to hopefully get in uh, Dooku range for Sam to support her even more. Uh, and keep them assembled. So, uh, just some positioning, as I mentioned before. Now I get a free range one shot on uh, T as well. And roll like that. More nice dice. Five, uh, four hits. A little bit scary for Shaq T. Uh, but it gets just enough. Has to spend the evade, which is not ideal with a potential Zam shot coming up. Uh, but does at least take no damage. No shot from Obi Wan here. So we're through to Zam. Don't yet know what her card is. Oh, in fact, I, as you said, you. Uh, this is the turn that you uh, uh, forgot to do a card. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, so Zam targeting <laughs> Shakti here. Hit, hit, crit. Very nice. Range three. Has some force, but no more tokens. Spends the force and takes a crit. Um, second Jedi down to one hit. I don't think I ever worked out what crit this is, so apologies to the viewers, uh, but I don't think it was ever relevant. It was a blinded pilot. <laughs> oh, was it? Okay. so. Uh, um, good to know. Uh, good to know. Um, and so as we come to these shots, we have Silas up by 49 points, but 
Zam one away from being halved, which would even the score up. And we get that uh, blinded Shaq T uh, firing in range three, but in bullseye, so it gets the three. With blinded, still allowed to spend her force. Uh, but another good uh, defensive roll um, from a fire spray here, taking no damage. Got to be hoping for a big hit here from Ahsoka. You'd think that, right? Has the calibrated focus. Rolls one. Not ideal, but, but will at least convert to two. And does A damage. For the half points. For the half points. And we are sitting at 49-49. Um, and I think this is the point where you realise that you forgot to assign a card. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Because I realised at the beginning of the turn, I think... I was like, oh shoot, I forgot I forgot to pick a card. And I, I can't, it's a May. So as soon as the system phase is over, you can't. So penalty points for both of you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I, I think at the time there was um I was thinking maybe we can wind this back and let him pick one, but given that I'd made all my moves in yeah, yeah he, he knows I'm lining up shots and Sam, he knows I'm lining up block. That was that was roughly when when we realized. Yeah. And these things happen. Oh, for sure, yeah. And then as we come into this turn, so we're even on points. Um but, Silas, I would imagine you feel better about this position than Louis does uh, for a couple of reasons. Do you want to talk through kind of your assessment of the game state as we are at this point? Uh, yeah, because I have Django ready to turn in. Um, and also Sam could do like some turnover maneuvers to also get the Argon. Whereas like Ahsoka isn't available to do much because the Rock and Shark and Maze are both very close to death. So they won't do something aggressive. And I am in a pretty good position here because I can do st stuff without getting punished too much, but punish him at the same time. Uh, and that's the turn I sacrificed before to get the positioning here. Absolutely. And again, I think it's it's that control where it's the toolbox elements of the, the dual fire sprays that you've got bombs you can drop, so that closes down all of the areas that the Jedi can get into. Plus, you've got those front and back arcs. Now, obviously, from the way we've seen you play and what, the way you've spoken about it, I don't anticipate that you're going to turn Django away and, and bank um, Zam down the board. But it just gives you so many options, right? And it takes away so many options from Louis. There are so many parts of that board he can't get to because of the situation, you know, two one health ships with thermal detonators potentially being dropped into that area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, again, the uh, thermal detonators are just ready to be served. Um, in the middle of his uh, his ships. Absolutely. And again, and thermal detonators not guaranteed damage, but when Dooku is nearby, they again become very, very scary for, for one health ships. And so, Louis, on, uh, from the point of view of the bombs, um, Mace and Shakti obviously at most risk, but I think have options to get away from them. Mace limited, I think, to the one hard, given his position on the board and the possibility of those bombs. I'm probably going to need Shakti to move out of the way so he can barrel roll. I think the person I'm most worried about is Obi-Wan. What do you do with him? Yes, if anyone can look at that and tell me whether three hard to the left fits or not, <laughs> I, mm -hmm. I really would like to know. I spent a long time looking at that, um, trying to see what, what I could do to get out of there. I think I ended up going for the two or the three bank to then boost out the way um, and try and clear the clear the bombs since you haven't set the three turn uh, i can confidently say yeah definitely fits and i will never be proven wrong <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> can i say my eyeball says the three hard probably fits but i can understand not wanting to end this turn sat on a rock taking two thermal detonators absolutely and again if it does clip the dooku makes that rock a guaranteed crit right which, yeah which if it was obi-wan in an ether sprite then I've got the shield to tank the crit and the fine tune controls to boost off it. I I might have considered it, um, but with the risk of putting an eater on there. So you've spoken about basically disengaging Obi this turn. Did you look at all about the two talent right and then the option of maybe boosting back around again? Because that was a move I really like. Yeah, so I, I looked long and hard at that as well. But I I think what I ended up doing in this turn was saying um, quite annoyingly, and this is part of how Silas flew the the game really well is I had to split my fire again. Um, I didn't want Django hard turning one into, into the fight. Um, and with Ahsoka not really anywhere to go other than maybe over the asteroid, it kind of meant that I, I wanted to go all in on Django on this turn. So, so that meant Obi needed to go over Zam, hopefully past the, the bombs and come around to try and get guns on, 
on Django, who I thought I might be able to block with um, Ahsoka doing a hard one just before the rock uh, and then reposition. Interesting. And was that primarily because you're still focused on this idea of Django being the best first target? Or is it that the thermal drop stops you targeting him with the other ships? Definitely the thermal drops more than Django being a target of priority. Given that Zam is now injured, I would rather focus fire Zam down. Um, but given where I am, I kind of have to have to switch targets again to Django because uh, Shakti and Ahsoka don't have any other choice. So having Obi join them would be would be good. And the other thing was if I can get three hits on Django, that's half uh, versus the five required to to kill Zam. Um, and if I can get myself up on points with half of Django, then then I'm feeling a lot better about where I am, even though my, my ships are sort of bleeding. No, absolutely. And we are just over 45 minutes into the game at this point. And so the likelihood of killing everything is is slim, right? There's just not enough time and, and not big enough guns yeah, in this list to do so. The, the other thing I didn't want to do was get myself trapped in a corner with all four ships. But this way, I give myself the, the center of the board to, to escape. So we see a very nicely judged uh, one hard there. As Louis said, just fitting inside that rock. We've got sense from Mace, which has told Louis where Django is going. Can you remember what he was doing? I think it was a hard one. And I spent a long time here looking at what would happen if I move Ahsoka, because I think a hard one from Django puts him turning in more than I want him to, because I kind of want to make sure he's not got guns on Obi. Makes sense. But then the difficulty, obviously, is if you don't move Ahsoka, it does limit Obi's ability to kind of get out of the way of those bombs a bit. Uh, obviously, yet to see what Obi is doing. So you can see you can spending a little bit of time here, and this is one of those where you feel like if you if you stare at it long enough, you should be able to work out where they're going to end up. But, but blocking, the, <laughs> blocking the hard turns is always slightly tricky, I find, and often the arc moves a bit more than you want it to. Yeah, I, I spent a lot of time looking at different angles of this. Um, and the other thing that crossed my mind was if I block Django where Ahsoka is now, it gives me an opportunity that maybe he's flying over the rock next turn. And that's, that's obviously a plus. Yeah, I think they say American football is a game of inches. X-Wing is a game of millimetres. And X-Wing with Jedi is a game of fractions of millimetres. And that's where Louis is right now. Deciding to stay still. Uh, we can see Shakti's come around into actually a really interesting position. And now it looks like that one hard bump is going to be onto Shakti instead of Ahsoka. Even believe Ahsoka has a lock on Django, so she has double mud shot uh, at the block. And I think without Django having moved, at the moment, Ahsoka isn't in Django's arc and Django isn't in Ahsoka's. And if Shakti stays still and Django bumps into her, I have no idea whether you're both going to be in each other's arcs or whether one of you comes out better. The straight boost is another option which I think still blocks. Uh, and, but again, I have no idea if that's going to make you, the arc move more or less, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, I think that's, that's exactly where my thought process is here, is how much of the ship turns when he bumps into Shakti? Does that give him guns on Ahsoka? Because uh, obviously, if I can avoid that, great. Shakti is definitely not going to be shooting anyway. So is she better off going forward for that block and then Django gets no shot? Um, or is she better off where she is now? And part of that thinking was also what happens in the in the next turn, um, where do I have the option to to block Django again? Where where would I rather Shakti be? So you go ahead and go for the boost, and we'll find out in a moment whether that was the correct choice. I went for the boost, and I remember Silas. If I don't know if you recall, but uh, I was also really worried that if I boost Shakti, I create space between the two ships that um, Django just slips into, and I and in the end, there's no there's no way he's fitting that. But at the time, it was no. We just saw the maneuver, like no, that that doesn't fit. Uh, but the possibility of it before the boost was... was was really scary because then then Shakti is going to get shot uh, from the rear arc really badly. So I, I was really scared about that. But as soon as the, the move was done, I thought, oh, that's, that's miles away. That's never going to And so we get the nice one hard from Mace, able to barrel out with the force, the fine-tune controls, take his focus, and looks like he's going to be out of arc of Django uh, once Django has moved. Less happy about Obi's position. He looks to be taking both those bombs, uh, which on three health could be a problem. I think the Dooku is probably in range of the bomb, but maybe wanting to keep that force for defense. Um, is Dooku, do you have to be in range of the bomb or the ship that's rolling? 
Uh, the ship that's rolling. Okay, so certainly Deku is in, in range of the ship. But yeah, maybe with uh, with the aggressive moves here, Louis, you're going to force uh, Deku to be kept for defense. Oh, yeah, and you can see I, I got I got caught by by all of them. Even even Ahsoka got caught by one. And I forgot to uh, to Dooku those. Um, didn't even think about it. So the first roll on Obi Wan is a hit, and the second roll is a crit. Which I suppose in hindsight saved you your Dooku, right? Because that's exactly what you'd have called anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Free Dooku. Uh, and then we get the one roll. So all of a sudden, Obi Wan. Is Obi Wan down to two health there? Or... He's down to one. He's down to one. He's taken hit crit, and and the crit was a structural damage, which is obviously a bit of a death sentence for an eater. Nice. Uh, and Ahsoka taking a strain, but but not taking a damage. But good shots into Django, and we just check the Django arc there, and we can see that Django doesn't have arc on Ahsoka. So not a great start with the bombs, but this could bring it back. Average roll from Obi Wan. Spending R seven A seven for a crit, but keeping the force. Obviously, kind of talked through it, but a nice talent roll here from Zam that's got her arc back in the game. Yeah, that's mainly just for having both of them facing the same thing. Uh, again, back in the action before it's too late. So only one damage into Django there. And now a good choice of targets from Zam. We've got a one health tokenless Shakti. We've got a three health strained Ahsoka. Maybe less appealing because uh, it's range three and through a rock uh, into a one health but structural damaged AB. So <laughs> spoilt for choice. Um, Who would you go for here and why? Uh, I think I went for Ahsoka again to strip the tokens. Uh, and she had strain and she was close to half points. That was the, the process, but I rolled that. The first time in the game, so it didn't matter. But I like the thought process there. So I think a lot of players would, would be tempted to be aggressive there, try and take something off the board, and, and shooting the most healthy ship might seem like a funny choice, but sticking to those win conditions, right? Sticking to the fact that the less damage your fire sprays take, the more you're likely to win the game, I think is really sensible. Um, Shot through gas cloud there from Mace onto Django. One hit uh, and uh, uh, no way that's getting through. And then we've got this Ahsoka shot and we see if this focus makes a difference. Ooh, didn't need it in the end. Hit, hit, crit. Nice roll there for you, Louis. Even better than the rolls I got on the thermal detonators. <laughs> yeah, yes. Um, uh, and for once, uh, we don't get double paint off Django. Um, and so he's also halved. He has taken hit crit. Uh, and Louis is up on points at 98 to 77. At this point, I got a little little stressed. Um, I was behind for the first time, and my positioning wasn't great. So this is a crucial turn in the game, I think. And although, you know, the, you didn't strip the focus in the end, and it wouldn't have mattered anyway, I think... Your point stands, and and as I was saying before, we talked about the shots. You were at that point ahead in the game, um, and the way you stay ahead is to keep your your ships healthy. So I I really like that decision in terms of the target priority. Um, had you chipped a damage through onto a Saker and 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 got rid of the focus, so, you know, that might have made a huge difference. Um, as it is, Louis, good job I think to to bring it back from a a start that I really didn't like. Um, I don't know that you necessarily did anything wrong in the opening uh, other than maybe that turn in with mace was was slightly more aggressive than i might have been but but certainly uh you ended up um in a bit of a hole uh, but digging yourself out here and now it's the fire sprays who look like they've got limited options zam facing the rock uh django with a bit more space uh, but uh you've got the sense available to look at at least one of these guys What's your thought process here, Louis? You're now up on points, but your whole list is on fire. <laughs> yeah, I think Silas mentioned here is like, oh, all these ships on one health. I just, I just need to give one of them a poke, and and maybe they'll fall. Um, so, so that's that's definitely playing on my mind here. Um, I'm thinking Zam's doing the one bank because he wants to clear the stress. I'm thinking Django probably does a one hard away because that sets him up for the proximity mines he hasn't used yet um, and, and is a good spot because going into that 
into that area is going to be really, really crowded. He, he knows I'm going to put at least one ship there. Zam's going to be there. Uh, where does Django go? So for, for me, it's, it's now a case of, can I try and um, preserve some ships and not put them in bad positions where they're going to die? And also get some guns on one of them because yeah, I've got half points on both, but they're both still standing and they both still have a lot of health. Yeah, it's a funny game state, isn't it? Like you were saying earlier on about switching target to Django because you had to do less damage to him to get half points. And we saw that play out really nicely. Uh, but now your next points are five health away. Whereas <laughs> if Silas was to do five damage to your list, uh, there would be one, one health ship left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed. Yeah, so so here it's it's a really critical point actually was um was Obi Wan and I think I thought long and hard about the disengage to the right to then bring him back around in, in better positioning, or the one hard to the left where he's going to get probably some good quality shots on somebody, but he has to has to has to survive whatever Django shoots at him because he's got structural damage, um, and if he's doing a one hard, there's every chance Django's doing a blue. You know, he's he's in a very sketchy position. Yeah, and Django's tricky, isn't he? Because it would be really nice to try and keep him where he is, but having the option to hard turn away to the right or to just go quick and straight, it's hard to cover all of those options uh, and leave him in a position where he can't get a rear arc shot onto AB1. Silas, from your point of view, as you said, a bit worried, behind on points for the first time in the game, Talk us through what you think Louis is about to do in this turn uh, and how you came to the decisions about what, what you were going to do. So I figured he wanted to block me again. Uh, and I wouldn't mind that because, as I mentioned, I just need to poke one of them. Just just a little push and they will, they will go down. So I just figured, then let's just accept that I won't have my actions, but I will rely on my force. It's been working out like in the game till now. Uh, and I have Dooku and all that stuff. So I, my thought was to just, okay, we just joust this and hope to get something off the board. I spent a long time and uh, and, and afterwards when, when we moved into systems phase and I got the sense on Maze, does Obi-Wan's barrel roll to the right fit? Because that's that's part of the disengage plan um, and, and pretty critical. And I spent a long time looking at that and, and wondering whether Maze's nubs are going to gonna get in the way. I decided it would fit, um, and and this is where so something I keep telling myself actually is when I measure range for attacks, try and remember where everything falls. And <laughs> you know, I, I I spent a lot of time kicking myself that when Mace was shooting at Django, did I note where his range one ended? Because that would have been really useful information in the systems phase of this turn. And that's something which you know you can probably say the better players will automatically take note of every time they measure range. And some people, you know, even though they've got no shot, they'll measure range. Because, for example, Shakti, do I know where there are two forward clears at Glass Cloud kind of thing? I feel like you've teed me up very nicely for that. But I, especially on TTS, where when you measure, it measures everything for you, right? Like it throws the entire arc out. Yeah. I spend more time looking at where my arc is and where my bullseye is and those kind of things than looking at the dice, because the dice I have at that stage no control over, right? I can modify them or not, but, you know, they're rolling themselves, essentially. But it's giving you so much information when you measure that arc, as it does in real life hexing as well. Yeah, Lloyd, I was going to say you were really good at that, but you um, you said yourself you're good at it, so uh, you've done my job for me. It's, it's the one string to my bow. <laughs> no, I really want to say this about this bomb. I figured if he did the barrel roll, then he probably wants to disengage. And this is where I think he would land on the proximity mine. And if it didn't, I thought it was a well spent one. Because uh, I figured I was going down soon and the game was going to end soon. So I dropped it here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Earlier. So interesting. At the point where you decided to drop the bomb, did you know whether the barrel fit or not? I had. Because system phase is initiative wise. So he did the barrel and failed it. And then I couldn't see any other maneuver executed than the three bank. Uh, really um, interesting, really interesting. So so a bit of a tell there for an unintentionally from Louis. So we've got a barrel that's not fit. Worrying times. Uh, got to think that that either means, as you say, the three bank or, or maybe the five straight, uh, both of which now look slightly scary. And that's that's actually a good point. It's, I, I went for the three bank. So at this stage, having seen the mine go down, I know Obi-Wan's lost. 
Um, but it was pointed out to me by by Ollie after the game that if I was worried at all that the barrel roll was not going to fit, I should have put a three hard in. And okay, it's going to take me maybe half a turn more because I have to do a boost or or do the purple talon to come back. But it at least means I'm not you know at risk. Meanwhile, we get the two sloop from Ahsoka getting into a position that looks like it it may bump one of Zam and Django or potentially even both. Yes, yeah, Shakti saved that focus. I knew where Shakti was going and I knew um, where Django was going because Mace had sensed him and he was doing a full forward. And I was expecting Django to bump Ahsoka, therefore bump Shakti. So Ahsoka would be trading range one with, with Django. And I wanted to make sure Ahsoka didn't die and then get a good shot back into Django. And then talk me through your choices with Mace and Shakti. We've kind of talked about the possibility of, you know, if you're not sure whether the bow roll fits, picking a move that isn't a disaster, uh, perfectly timed, um, if if the bow roll doesn't fit. So as you were saying, uh, the three hard there, you know, would have gone through the gas cloud, wouldn't have been ideal, but but would have been an alive Obi-Wan um, who potentially wouldn't be taking much fire, and if, and if so, through a gas cloud here. The other moves feel like a bit of a sort of hodgepodge to me. You've got Ahsoka blocking, maybe getting a shot, if so, at range one with a bigger gun than her. Um, Mace kind of disengaging, looks like maybe trying to stay safe. Uh, and then Shakti flying into a position where I thought she was unlikely to get shots, if I'm honest. So we've seen that Django's four straight does, in fact, just fit uh, and goes over the top. It felt felt like a bit of like maybe you didn't have a, a solid idea about what you were going to do, whether you were trying to disengage and keep ships safe, or you were going to 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 do damage and kind of ended up doing a bit of both. Is that fair to say? Yeah. So I think Mace. I wanted to not um, lose Mace because I need sense if I'm going to close this game out, um, especially having just lost Obi Wan and. He he was not going to get in a position where he would not be taking shots, but still have a decent chance of taking shots. So I figured, go around the cloud um, and catch him on, on the back end. I've still got sense for next turn. The reason I put the one hard in with Shakti was looking at where Django can go. I'm thinking either he's going to do a one hard into the center of the board and drop a proximity mine into the space that he's just vacated, or potentially go through into the, the area behind that gas cloud. And I wanted to make sure that Shakti had the options with the system phase boost to, to get the, the block that I want. As it is, Shakti is dead, I think. She evaded the first shot from Django nicely, but that is two hits and two crits and with three agility and one health uh there's nothing she could do about it so we've got shakti dead and no shots for you this round louise bit of a disaster two ships down uh exactly as we were talking about that kind of tipping point that your list was on and now soaker and a one health mace have to have to claw it back. <laughs> I was just pausing there to look at the points. I don't. I don't know. Is killing one of them enough? Yeah. If we kill one yes. without losing uh, any more, um, so Ahsoka doesn't get halved and Mace doesn't die, then I do. I can steal the game. So, so it's kind of game on a little bit, but very much you know hail Mary time. A little bit apart from the prox mine. Yeah. So, so, so that was um, that was obviously a bit of a disaster round for me between Obi Wan's barrel not fitting and Django clearing that full forward on, on Ahsoka, um, everything's kind of really gone downhill from, from that stage. And it's, you know, you, 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 you said it earlier, right, that X-Wing is a game of fractions of millimetres and between the nubs on, um, on Mesa's ship and what is barely a nubs difference you can see between Ahsoka and Django, that's, that's pretty much the game swung. Yeah, absolutely. And it did make a huge difference in that you would have had only one shot into Shack T, uh, which if it had been four hits would have finished off anyway, but less likely to die. Um, and and Ahsoka at least putting some damage into Django. And given that you now need to kill Django, if he had two or three less health than he does now, you'd be feeling a lot better about that. Uh, so we get the prox mine drop there, uh, obviously hitting so you don't actually put it on the board. Uh, we get a damage and then a roll of, of a hit and a focus. Ahsoka living on one, and Silas, no Dooku spend there, and I think we were all expecting it watching the game live. Was that just forgetting, or...? Forgetting. 
Okay. Um, I guess I just wanted to save it for offense. Uh, and I just I didn't think about that being a possibility, and it weren't guaranteed anyways. Like, was it a hit and an eyeball? So if I called a crit, then yes, he would have been dead. Yeah, I think at, at this stage that you know we're we're kind of just closing out the game. There's there's very little expectation that I can kill both ships. Um, with with what's left on the table. You know, I, I needed either a Shakti to survive or Obi-Wan to not eat that to to obviously have the, the point differential, but also the ability to hurt them because now I can't block them um, and expect to be able to get sufficient guns on them. So Ahsoka is alive on one uh, and slightly under average roll from Sam there. Um, spends the focus and remains alive on one. But it was about time. Yeah, we've got a mace... Uh, range two shot into Django here. Needs to do some damage here, you feel. Oh, and more paint on Django. No further damage done. And I think I'm right in saying that you guys decide to to keep playing, see what happens in the next turn, and then make a decision from there. Louis, two win from this position. I think I'm right in saying you now need to kill both fire sprays. Is that correct? Um, I think I think so. At the time, I was up against the clock. And thinking maybe if I get one of them, there's a chance. I didn't really have time to to stop and count all the points. I think if you if you count them up, it, it wouldn't have been enough. But that was what I was I was certainly trying to do. Um, thinking you know if I get lucky dice, maybe I can I can punch through with a couple of crits and, and kill somebody. At least I've got five minutes left. We may as well we may as well try. Yep, absolutely. Uh, and so doing that, turning both arcs nicely onto Django. Range two shot from Django here, probably in his favor. I think you just need to roll a lot of dice and get very lucky at this point, Louis. Spends the focus for hit crit. And we get a full spend from Mace to stay alive. There's one health of Soko with another range one shot here from Zam. Zam now has a target lock. So you're going to be looking for better than the two hits of the previous turn. Oof, and that is it. And that is another dead Jedi. And I think at that point, you guys sensibly call it. Um, so congratulations to Silas. Very well played, I thought. Um, really you. clear target priority at the start of the game. You know, accurately identified that you need to keep your ships together and, and focusing on the same target. And I think did that really well. And I really liked that turn. You said that you had that turn off. And Louis, it sort of started going wrong with, with, the, with the kind of first real exchange of fire. And apart from that one turn where you nudged ahead, it sort of never really looked like it was going to be in your favour. Uh, starting with you, um, you played the, the list for for six rounds. Um, give us your thoughts on the list, on how you played this game, and kind of things that you you've learned from the tournament and you, that you're going to take forward into your next tournament. Yeah, so I I really like the list. Um, it's is one which obviously I as I said I've been fiddling around for for a long time now. The, the sort of four Jedi archetype. Um, trading a couple of ether sprites out for for eaters and seeing how they do. Um, I think marksmanship auto blasters R seven is is such a fantastic combo on the eaters, and and it's really quite cheap at at this stage. In terms of eaters, Shakti is great, and you know for forty four points she's she's cheap and easy to include and, and can pull some weight. Um, Obi wans obviously a little bit more expensive, has a good ability. You know that there there are people out there who are who are doing better than I am with a with a similar setup. So it's it's definitely got got legs and it's got the toolkit as well. I think this is probably one of my harder matchups where I have to be able to get mace in the fray, sensing and then getting the blocks off and then lining up the bullseyes. It it can be won, but against uh, you know Silas flying this well, you, there's there's not a lot I I could have done. I think he he put a lot of early pressure on me, um, and I I found it really hard to regroup from that, which which he you know is exactly what you should be doing with with a double fire spray list is sort of get in there real fast in your face and, and hurt. Yeah, I think a really good assessment, Louis. And I sort of alluded to a moment ago, but I think for me, the key turn and maybe the best decision made by either of you the whole game was that turn, sort of turn three or four, where Silas knew that he couldn't get shots with both ships without sacrificing position and took a turn off. You know, you described yourself, Silas, of having that turn where you're like, right, I know that Zam's going to get damaged here i know that django is not really going to be able to contribute and i think the, th the thing you did that i thought was really nice was you didn't try and achieve too much on that turn you made relatively conservative moves you didn't try anything crazy to kind of get yourself out of a problem you just accepted that the problem was happening minimize the impact and set yourself up to to come back from that 
um, swing against you the next turn. I thought that was really nice. Same question to you, really. You're going forward into the cut of the tournament. You look pretty comfortable with the list. And it's, as I said at the start of the game, it's a list we've seen a lot. What what have you what have you learned about it? Sort of what do you think you're doing better now than you were at the start of the tournament? And is there anything that you've run into that's given you trouble? Um, so my round loss was against the mirror match, actually, uh, with a one point bit uh, lower than mine. Well, that's depressing. <laughs> I was hoping for like, a, oh yeah, it really hates Graz the Hunter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I am facing some first order shenanigans. Um, so yeah, I I learned when to use Sam's cards, uh, like the timing and stuff. That's quite crucial. When I go into a game, I always wonder whether it's Sam or Django who's the target. Because if Sam's not the target, then I'm choosing one if where if you don't shoot me, I can shoot back at you. What do you think is the best first target? <sighs> I think it's I think it's Django because because he has the threat and he has the Dooku, which can help Sam. Uh, and people tend to not shoot Sam when they can only shoot at her, which I think it, most of the times it, it's a mistake. Not with Mace here, because she could have died. But I've had some games where all ships were not damaged at all, and they chose not to attack at her. Cool. With Sam, it's that old quick draw thing, isn't it? It's You kind of don't want to attack her, but if you never attack her, you're going to lose the game. Focusing on, focusing on Django first means you don't have to worry about that until hopefully you're up in the game, or maybe so far behind that it doesn't matter. And so, Lloyd. I think it's down to you to to sum up uh, and say goodbye. Okay, so I have many thoughts on this. Um, so firstly, actually, Silas, you spoke right at the beginning about dropping Slave 1 title. Um, and when you said it, my first thought was, that sounds like a terrible idea because you're taking away free crit conversions. But actually, the more I thought about it, and, and as sort of time went on, I actually liked that decision more and more. And obviously, in this issue, you put it back in. Um, and then to hear that you say that the game you lost was a, a mirror match where you were outbid. Do you think, again, doing this, would you take that title off again now if this tournament was starting week one again now? I would, because either it doesn't get used or I forget. It's as simple as that. Absolutely, and without auto blasters as well. Like The crit is nice, but it's not guaranteed to push through. Exactly. So there's no higher benefit of it just other than the hit to crit. Um, and it's three points, and then I might as well just bring uh, marksmanship if I really want that uh, for two points less. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think I agree. Um, and I think double fire sprays are present enough and common enough in the meta that we're going to increasingly see people cutting more and more stuff off of them to win that kind mm-hmm. of race to the bottom. Um, and actually, your list was the first time I've seen anyone take a serious bid with it, and to hear that you actually were outbid is is interesting. So I think... Yeah. Increasingly, we will see people strip more and more out and, and try and get down to the bottom of you know where is the raw efficiency in the list. And that's when Graz the Hunter beats it. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. Um, I think in this matchup, yeah, the, the double fire spray, the things I don't tend to like is really beefy lists, um, which the same thing Bobber doesn't like, right? Lots of red dice coming back at them. And I think in this matchup, Louis just doesn't quite have enough beef. Like You have a lot of kind of control with the sense and the positioning of the blocking but then not necessarily quite enough guns to follow up. So it is, yeah, it's a tough matchup for Louis for sure. My main takeaway or final point maybe for this is I think both of you flew it really, really nicely and probably flew. It felt like kind of got everything out of your lists that you could have. Um, these are not lists I'd recommend for newer players at all. Um, just the number of weird list interactions and timings. Uh, scribble down quickly. There are four or five interactions in the system phase across this list. There's one, <laughs> yeah. one in the end phase with Shaq. Uh, Dooku triggers off of absolutely everything. Um, Palp triggers, yeah, all the time as well. Like it's they're not listed I'd recommend for new players at all, but they're definitely both interesting for sure. Yeah, and I think that that is a good place to end it. Uh, as we said, thank you both so much for coming on. Um, well played to both of you. Good luck in the cut, Silas, uh, and hard luck on just just missing out with actually what I think is maybe a slightly weak list, Louis, and I think that the fact that you were in, in the running for the cut is a marker of how good a Jedi pilot you are. Thanks to everyone who, for watching. Uh, we will see you again in two weeks with more from the Kyber Cup. Goodbye.